Hi, welcome to another video from SQL Maestros. Uh, just yesterday, I recorded a video where I talked about uh, index page splits and fragmentation. And in that video, I had committed that I will record another video where I will show how you can track page splits using extended events. So if you want to understand more about page splits, uh, I would recommend that you watch uh, the previous video. It should be there in the channel. Uh, but here is a quick introduction. So page splits as, is an internal operation inside the SQL Server database engine. Uh, when you have a page, a, a data page, which is almost full and you have to insert a record and based on the order of uh, the column, the key column, let's say a clustered index key column, if the record has to go in a specific page and there is not enough space, then uh, SQL Server will split that page into uh, into two. I mean, you can't really split a page into two, but a new page gets allocated and 50% of the data moves from the original page to the new page. So really nothing is splitting as such, but uh, this allocation of a new page and the data getting split into two is uh, what is called as page split. Uh, and this is an expensive operation in, in many ways and slows down performance and uh, generates more log records etc. So tracking uh, uh, page split is an important activity that uh, you should be doing as to which code, what kind of uh, workload or internal maybe DML operations are actually causing this, you should be able to uh, track that. Uh, now prior to extended events, it was difficult to find out uh, uh, what uh, exactly is causing page split. I remember we used to use the perfmount counter in access methods page splits per second, but since the time I have started using extended events, it has become really easy to track page splits. And this is what I'm going to uh, demo in this video. Now, without any further delay, let's jump into demo. Let's get started. And I'm going to use uh, tempdb for the purpose of this demo. In tempdb, I will create this table uh, T1, and you will notice that T1 has a column C1, which is of type unique identifier and I have purposely uh, put unique identifier uh, there as a data type because uh, with every GUID that gets generated using this uh, function new ID, there will be no guarantee that the GUID that has, gen uh, has been generated is higher or lower than the previous GUID. And then the moment I create a clustered index on this column and of course SQL will always uh, have to insert uh, the record based on the correct order of that GUID. So that's really done on purpose here. Um, and I will just quickly do a recap. The purpose here is to ensure that every record gets into its correct position on the page uh, or or in other words, goes to the correct page in, in a specific order. Uh, this also means that GUIDs are not really good. Uh, you shouldn't really land up creating clustered indexes on them. There are some those some of those best practices that you should try to follow that uh, your uh, key column for your clustered index should be narrow, should be ever increasing um, and um, yeah, some of those. So let's, um, I have already created the table and before I start inserting data in this uh, table, let's go and uh, create an extended events session. So I'll go to extended events and I go to sessions. I will right click and click on new session wizard. So I'm, I'm using a very simple um, mechanism here. Um, I, when I'm tracking page splits, I get a I try to do it a little more complicated way, but that's fine. That, that is something which you can see in my video course. I will just go and say track um, page splits. That's the name of the event. And let's go next and I'm not going to use a template next and I'm going to choose the event here. So select the events that you want to capture and I'm going to filter on page. Uh, let me filter on split. I'll simply type SPLIT and I get this page split. So this is the event that you want to capture. This has the default payload here, some of the fields that you're getting and you can see you get the database ID, file ID, so on and so forth, but there's no way to find out the code here. You will get this on the next screen. So let's take page split, move next. And um, we selected that. And now these are global capture fields, which means these are common to many events. So I'm going to pick up a few ones from here. Let's say I pick up session ID. And then yes, this is the important one. I want to pick up the SQL text. 
So this is this will give me the exact code, the workload that is splitting uh, the pages or is, is really causing page splits. Let's move next. And um, I am not providing any filter for the time being. So as I said, extended event setup may not be as simple as what you see right now in the demo here, uh, because it's just an academic demo. Uh, you may really want to set up a couple of filters to make sure that you are only capturing relevant information. It's very overwhelming and you may really capture a lot of stuff and you don't want that. Uh, let's go and script this out for you to see how the T-SQL code looks like. Let's go and finish. And I'm going to start the event and watch it live as well. So let's go and close this. And now this is running live. And uh, this was this was the code that we could have just written to get this event started. Um, and this was the event that we are tracking. SQL Server is a package in extended events terminology. And in this package, you have the page split event. And uh, we are taking action. Action here is the global uh, fields. We are taking session ID and the text and we are putting all of this data in ring buffer which is going to reside in memory and all of our targets reside in package zero. So that's kind of a quick explanation of what this TCL code looks like. Now let's go and close this. You may want to save it also if you need it. And um, yeah, let's go and insert some data and I don't really need a million rows. Maybe uh, a thousand rows is are, are good enough for us to track. And this is the code that I'm running now. And this is going to generate page splits. This is session ID 67. Let's go ahead and execute. And wow, runs pretty quickly. And if you go here, you can see a couple of page splits have happened and uh, observe session ID as I keep going from event to event, you can see the new page ID, all that this is the default payload. And all of this has happened from um, the uh, this code that we just ran and here is your SQL text and if you expand this let me show this into the column there uh, in the window and you can see that this was the code that was running and uh, uh, of course this is very powerful uh, extended events you can group and aggregate and all of that well in this demo all that is not needed all that I want just wanted to show you is that uh, how you can track page splits using extended events and you can get to know which code is also causing it. Simple, quick demo, very effective. And once you're done, you should go and uh, stop the session or delete it or something. I generally stop the sessions and I script them out. Uh, that just uh, saves uh, some time. Hope the demo was useful. Um, with this, thank you very much. Hope this video was worth your time. See you soon in another video.